You got to do them by yourself too, my friend. By myself. You always th- you always throw me under the bus, making me do interviews by myself. You have to do a little uh, solo, a few on your own as well. I got to figure out how to record the phone and all that. Oh, that's right. You need me to engineer it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's all good, man. Hey, hey, it's all good, man. It's all good, man. Hey, hey, it's all good, man. Ladies and gentlemen, this is It's All Good, Man, the Better. Better Call Saul Podcast. My name is Brian, and with me, as always, is my favorite Taco Bell hot sauce flavor packet, Dave. Dave, how are you doing, my friend? New flavor only lasts till August of 2016, so act now. <laughs> Dave and I also host the Nothing Important Podcast. You can find that at www.nothingimportantpodcast.com, which is where Dave and I talk to people more famous, and more important, and better looking than we will <laughs> ever be. Dave, so uh, it's kind of fun. Better Call Saul ended back in, I don't know, it was like March or April or something like that, but we're uh, holding true to what we did last year. We're getting interviews with the people involved with Better Call Saul in the off season. So our shows uh-huh. are a little bit more infrequent, but we will turn them out as much as we can. Uh, next week, you and I are talking to uh, a pretty awesome uh, actor on the show. But uh, I'm not going to say anything about that. So Nice. <laughs> so I had a dream, Brian. Oh, you did? I think it was last night. I, I've been, I've been dog-sitting. All my friends asked me to dog-sit. Mm-hmm. So I'm in a really, really much nicer house than I'm used to. But even though the bed's more comfortable, I can't sleep in it. Okay. <laughs> and <laughs> in one of my intermittent naps, I guess you would call it, I had a dream that we talked to Bob Odenkirk on the podcast and fucking blew it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that that's the only way. That's the only way I think an interview with us and him would probably go. Uh, which <laughs> which reminds me, I'm kind of using the Patrick Fabian technique of uh, just I just keep harassing him on Twitter until he eventually relents. <laughs> so yes, I've seen anybody listening out there. Uh, if you're on our Twitter handle, which is ISGM Podcast uh, on Twitter, make sure to tweet Bob Odenkirk. His Twitter handle is Mister Bob Odenkirk. And uh, let him know that you want to hear him on uh, It's All Good, Man, the Better Better Call Saul podcast. Make sure to use all the hashtags and links and uh, Twitter handles and all the stuff you can. Because I, I think he'd be a pretty significant get, right? Like, it, it's got to happen. Uh, yeah. It, it's it's got to happen before we go off the air. So, like, like be- the get. before Better Call Saul wraps up his conclusion or we lose all of our listeners, uh, we have, or they kill off Jimmy McGill or they kill off Jimmy McGill. We need to get Bob Odenkirk, Jonathan Banks and, uh, Michael McKean. Those are, those are the big three. That's the, uh, triumvirate, mm. the, uh, the Holy Trinity of better call Saul, if it, as it were. Right. And that's not to downplay the other, uh, people, you know, like, uh, Patrick Fabian and, uh, Ray Seahorn, but they've already been on our podcast. And of course they're always welcome back, but, uh, we have goals, man. I, I, I put it out there uh, pretty uh, loudly on Twitter that no one, no one, no one, no one has more Better Call Saul guest on it than It's All Good Man. And I stand by that. And I was thinking as I was typing that up, I was like, well. Chris you know, Hyrewick might uh, take exemption to that. Yeah, but uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think so because I think the obviously the official Better Call Saul podcast probably has more people involved with Better Call Saul, but then I'm like, no, you know, they'll have one or two actors, but then they pretty much revolve around the same crew, Kelly Dixon, who is also yeah. on Twitter under Kelly Dixon, tried to get her, tried to push her towards coming on our podcast as well, folks. She's the lead editor for Better Call Saul. And, uh, you know, she's always there with Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould, who are like the Alpha Omega that we need to get on the show. Right. Right. So, but They're like the Titans. Right. Ex- exactly. <laughs> uh, the, but it's... For the most part, they have people in and out, but they they remain with the three main people. Uh. You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying by sheer numbers of people involved with Better Call Saw, I'm pretty sure we could probably confidently state that we have more Better Call Saw-based guests than anybody on the internet. 
I would agree with that, I guess. And let me you, just you put that out there. It. Even <laughs> even if I am proven wrong, I will still claim that we have the most Better Call Saul <laughs> Yes. Kind of like how we claim to have the Better Better Call Saul podcast. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I will stand by it till the day I die. So, Dave, uh, first off, so a little uh, background on our interview coming up in just a few minutes. Uh, Ann Cherkis, she is, uh, wh- what is her title again? Executive Story Editor. Executive Story Editor of Better Call Saul. And right. I here's the funny thing about being unemployed. For somebody who's unemployed, I seem to have less time now to do this stuff than I did when I was working <laughs> uh, 60 hours a week at my last job. So uh, Ann was awesome because uh, uh, classic. I found her on Twitter. I said, hey, this is who we are. This is what we'd like to do. She wrote me back. Like, hey, let's go through the appropriate channel. So we wrote our buddy at AMC, uh, who's helped us out quite a bit. He facilitated the conversation. We had to push it back twice. Then on the day that we could do it, you had to fly solo because I had a, just a day just full of stuff of picking up people at the airport and getting things <laughs> together. And right. on top of that, I I still wasn't even able to listen to the interview that you sent me until last night. And, uh, great job, my friend. I, I was pretty impressed and it kind of pisses me off because you're way better at this than I am. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. The only, th- the only market improvement is it, uh, or is it an improvement? You don't hear the word awesome as much. That's true. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> it's it, been a running joke we've been <laughs> kind of on lately. You know, yeah, it's funny. Dave talks to a lot of people that listen to our podcast and it's, it's been brought up to Dave that, uh, I use the word awesome a lot and that's very true. And I told my wife that, and she said the same thing I had, where she said, if they think you used the word awesome on the show a lot, like they should hang out with you in real life. Because really, <laughs> I think 90% of things are awesome. Like, like I, uh, It's a great word. Yeah. First off, it's a fun word to say. And uh, that is, even in the worst of times, I really don't think I have much to complain about. So for me, a lot of things are just awesome. So, yeah. You know, you know, and by nature of my job too, absolutely. I throw absolutely around a lot too, but it's just because by yeah. nature of my profession, I say absolutely a ton. So it just becomes part of my uh part of my daily vernacular. Like for example, I, I'm I'm a relatively polite guy. So I'll mm-hmm. hold uh doors open for people like on the street or going into a store. And of course uh-huh. they'll say thank you. And instead of saying sure thing or you're welcome, I'm always like, absolutely. you know like just like i would at work absolutely my pleasure which sounds even weirder when you're out on the street because they're like oh well thanks for letting me cut in line since i only have two two items absolutely my pleasure and then that probably (laughs) sounds 10 times creepier (laughs) but i always say what do i say no problem i say no worries i picked up no worries Mm. out in california Mm. everybody out in california says no worries right it's just that chill back yeah chill chill out chill back type yeah no worries i didn't even say a real phrase there chill back what the fuck is that (laughs) you know okay so anyway back to ann Cherkis. um a couple things from your interview one once again great job thank you thank you sir two it's funny to me that she actually heard of our or she actually listened to our podcast before she worked on better call saul yeah and then she agreed to come on it yeah so we're, I guess we're not too alienating. <laughs> we're slightly. I didn't. We're slightly. I didn't ask alienating. her opinion. I mean, you'll you'll hear the interview, obviously, but I did not ask her opinion of our show. Mm-hmm. That's probably a safe I, move. I was, yeah, I was kind of scared too. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun because um, when, when we talk to the people who are actors and such, you know, asking about the process and such, it, it's fun to kind of get an inside look at the writers' room and kind of some of their processes and and get the general feel. Yeah. Of of something that's very closed off from the rest of the world, including people that are just like rabid fans of the TV show. Right. I think she missed my joke though. That that's okay. I I miss her jokes too. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's talking about post it notes on the wall, and I want I was making a joke about throwing darts at it. Well, yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, you did about throwing darts. But then what was what was interesting about that is I think why she missed the joke is because she went on right after that to state there is actually a system that they have in place where they use where they use yeah. the index cards because I think you talked about throwing darts on the at the index cards on the dartboard for show ideas and she started talking about how they actually have show ideas on the, the index cards 
Right. And so I, I think it wasn't uh, that she missed the joke so much as just coincidentally you kind of hit upon a tool <laughs> yeah. a tool that they use. So in her mind, it wasn't a joke. It was like, oh, well, this guy knows about the index cards. So yeah, this is what we do with the index cards. <laughs> they do that. That's actually pretty common. I think South Park's Six Days of Air had that in there too. You see it a lot in movies and stuff. It's the storyboard. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Dave, um, before we head out to the interview with Ann Cherkis, uh, what what were your what were your thoughts? How do you think you did in the interview? I thought I did pretty well in the interview. Honestly, the you did. openings and the closings I need work on. Um, the uh, I didn't like say anything about her background or like ask her to promote anything of hers, stuff like that. I forget about. Mm-hmm. I'm just more into the conversation. Absolutely, I'm a good conversationalist. I'm a good listener. Right, on. and uh, I actually started. I tried to jump right in, and she was like, "Are we gonna? Are we? Are we going?" And I was like, "Oh <laughs> yeah, okay. Hold on a second. Let me do the intro." Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess Anne doesn't do a lot of uh, a lot of interviews. You know, the the writers no, probably yeah. aren't aren't as used to being peppered with questions or, or talking to strangers over the phone about their line of work like the actors are. It was smooth though. I mean, she she relaxed or was relaxed. I think we were both kind of nervous. We both relaxed, and mm-hmm. it was a good time. Absolutely. Well, Dave, I enjoyed listening to it, and obviously once you get this all mixed and we get it posted on the thread, I'm obviously going to listen to it again. Excellent job, and I hope everybody out there enjoys Dave's chat with Ann Cherkis, the executive story editor for Better Call Saul. <laughs> Joining us on the Someone Important Hotline is Ann Cherkis, executive story editor and writer for Better Call Saul. Ann, thanks for joining us. Uh, it's all good, man. Oh, thank you for having me. So we were just briefly speaking. You've actually heard our show before, so that puts me a lot more at ease. And I appreciate that yeah. and flattered and humbled by that. And, um, and oh. you did mention that uh, season one, you were just a fan of the show. And by season two, you were working on the show. So tell our yes. fans a little bit about that. Well, um, it was pretty cool, you know, how it it ended up working out. Um, Certainly nothing I ever expected. Um, Yeah, I was just, uh, you know, I I knew, of course, I was a huge Breaking Bad fan and, Mm -hmm. you know, was very much looking forward to Better Call Saul. And um, so I watched season one and I loved it. And I was, you know, looking for other things, you know, to that, that, you know, other media that was talking about the show. And I, I stumbled upon your podcast. Um, and then I got a phone call really out of the blue, uh, which, which led to, which led ultimately led to the job. So, um, you know, and so I knew, I knew the show already. That's pretty interesting. A lot of people that we've talked to have always had some kind of, a very, very entertaining story about how they got into it or like maybe how they found out they got hired or just some kind of random. Yeah. I mean, I guess probably most stories in Hollywood are pretty crazy and coincidental. A lot of networking and stuff. Yeah. I mean, for whatever reason, stuff doesn't necessarily happen easily <laughs> in this business. And I don't exactly know why that is. But yeah, I mean, in my situation, I was actually committed to working on another show when I got the phone call. So that was, it was a little bit tough, you know, because I, it was something that I just couldn't say no to, but I also had an obligation to another show. Mm -hmm. And so I had to sort of work that out. And it was looking at first, like I would, I was going to have to turn them down. And, um, but it eventually all worked out. So I uh, I was very grateful to the other the other show. They you know let and, and it was ABC Family who let me out of my contract. And, oh wow! Um, yeah, and so I you know it was sort of a, le- a legal matter. And then uh, I came into the writers' room for season two about five weeks late. Uh, so they hmm. had already started before I before I came in. Wow. And then you just have to jump yeah. in and kind of just keep the ball rolling. Yeah, I mean it was you know it was it was hard, and I mean to their credit, Peter and Vince were you know incredibly 
uh, cool about the whole thing and said, <laughs> you know, look, just, you know, they're like, look, obviously there's no pressure at first because, yeah. you know, you're, you're coming in here blind and, you know, we've never had a situation where we had a writer come in after the room started. So they were just like, you know, just sit back and listen and, you know, take your time kind of jumping in. And it, yeah, they were great. That's that's a very common sentiment. Brian and I talk about it all the time. We're not shy about the fact that we started this podcast to kind of get fans to our other podcast, basically. Um, we're both Breaking Bad fans, and we picked this show, and then it blew mm-hmm. up. You know, And we're like, holy cow, we picked the right show. And you must feel, yeah. I mean, on a whole nother level, the same way with all the awards and the accolades. Like, you got into the show, oh my God. and it's it's the one of the biggest shows on television right now. I know, and I'm... Seriously, I'm still pinching myself, you know, I mean, I did, I, I am, I mean, I worked on season two and now we're, we started working on season three and I just, even now every day when I walk into the office, I kind of pinch myself and I just, I feel incredibly grateful because yeah, I mean, there are so many amazing shows out there, you know, there's, I mean, as everyone says, there mm-hmm. are too many. And <laughs> so to be, you know, for this to be working on a show that's recognized is, you know, your odds are not good. Right. <laughs> Even yeah. if, you know, the other, these other shows I'm talking about are really good. It's just, there are only so many shows that can, you know, be nominated. So, yeah. Yeah. Especially um, with- it's, it's crazy. Yeah, especially with the binge watching and you know, uh, I don't know if cable viewership is down, but it seems to be that you know this 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 show is getting people to tune in to watch it as it airs, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, no, which is which is amazing. And look, I mean, it's yes, I mean, it is a great show, but also I think you know for Breaking Bad fans out there, I mean, there was sort of a built-in audience already. I mean, at least at the very least, people were going to tune in at first mm-hmm, right. to see, you know, what what it was. And but you know, it didn't necessarily mean that people would keep tuning in. Yeah. So, um, as I said, I know for me as a fan, I was thrilled with the first season. I just thought it was so great, and you know, nobody knew, including by the way, Vince and Peter, what you know, what that, sh- what the show is going to be. Mm-hmm. I mean, they sort of had a, an idea, but you know, you never know until you start doing it. Right. And so much of it. And then even, mm-hmm. I would say so much of it is done kind of as it's going. Like it's, you're, you're, you're starting later Absolutely. episodes before other episodes are even finished. So it's kind of fluid. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah. I mean, as they've talked about, you know, in many interviews, I mean, are the way that, they work the way that Vince works and now Vince and Peter work that they, you know, we don't really talk ahead that much. So we just go from episode to episode. And, um, so yeah, we never know really what's going to happen. Does that you happen? Know, we, sorry. Uh, does that happen no one, to no help one. with, uh, separating maybe like the breaking bad stuff from the better call Saul? Cause you're coming in as a fan of breaking bad. And I would imagine there has to be some sort of, conscious decision to not let too much influence how you work on better call Saul. Yes. I mean, (laughs) yes, I think, you know, we, they, yeah, I mean, you know, it doesn't come up every single day, but Mm -hmm. it definitely comes up that, you know, if somebody in the room pitches an idea to have, you know, a character come in from breaking bad, it's, you know, they, they, we talk about it endlessly, you know, before that's, you know, before that happens, it's, you know, and many times it's discussed and we, you know, the decision ends up being, no, we're not going to put them in, you know, uh-huh. so they, they definitely err on the side of being incredibly careful and that, you know, it has to feel organic to this yes. show. And that comes off, at least as far as we're concerned and from the feedback we've gotten from our fans and people we talk to is that it has been organic. It's not forced or heavy handed. There's been a couple of times where like Brian will text me or I'll text him like, oh, hey, did you catch that? you know, breaking bad characters like, Oh no, I kind of missed it. And, uh, it's, it's right. nice. Cause like some that. of them are not, you know, some of them are smaller characters that just mm-hmm. had, you know, a bit part in, in breaking bad. And yeah, I mean, it, it's, um, yeah, it's not, you know, they definitely, we definitely don't do it as a stunt or anything. It's, right. You know, is there somebody from the other show that makes sense in, in this show? And, um, so, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's always sort of there as an option, but they're very careful about about that and the crossover. 
So as far as season one, what is one of your favorite moments from season one that really got you excited mm. about working on season two? Mm, that's a really good question. I mean, I, first of all, just meeting the Chuck McGill character, mm -hmm. I thought was, you know, was, was great. I mean, obviously he's not someone who was ever on Breaking Bad. So right. I love that, you know, we learned that Jimmy has this, this brother. Um, I mean, I think for me, one of the, my favorite scenes of that season and, and the one that is, is most memorable is just Jimmy diving into that dumpster, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, outside of, of Sam Piper and just that scene and, and how, you know, just how great Bob is mm -hmm. and, and just how funny it was. And also, but it also is such a great character moment for him because it's it spoke to his tenacity, you know, right. to, 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 to get those, to get those documents. And, um, and then just the way that they crafted that scene where the reveal at the end that actually the documents are, are in the, the shredding and the recycling, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that they weren't even in there. And that was just right next to the dumpster. And I, I thought that was, that was great. So, yeah, I think, that would, that's a good one for me. Yeah, that's one of the things I love is how interjected little bits of humor or just like really grounding it and, and making things relatable a lot of times or making you chuckle at an awkward moment yeah. sometimes. That's that's what I love about Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. I love the tone that this show has, has struck. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it it and I think that's just honestly a, a product of you know, the, the personalities in the room. You yeah. Know? I mean, it seems to be Vince and Peter are both actually really funny, even <laughs> though, you know, when they do interviews and things, you might not, that might not come across. I don't, I don't know, but it's, they're really, really funny. And so I think whenever there's a chance to add, inject any kind of humor, they, you know, unless it's too broad, I mm -hmm. think that would be the only reason not to do it. But if it fits in with the tone there, they're all for it. And right. I, you know, I personally love that. I can definitely say from their interviews, it seems that they're at least very good humored and good natured people, you know, they really are. Yeah. They really are. And, you know, and the thing is, I, you know, I spend so much time with them because <laughs> I'm in that room for, you know, many, many hours a day, five days a week. And, um, you know, you really get to know people when right. you when you spend that much time with them. I mean, frankly, we all spend more time together than we do with our families um, <laughs> because, you know, it's just the days. nature of this type of job. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. And so you really do get to know people as well as, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting because it's, I haven't known them for that long, but mm -hmm. I feel like I have. And because, you came in late, but you, know, you were still kind of accepted into the group, right? And not. Yeah. Yeah. Which was also, you know, I was nervous about that right. and, and everyone was very cool about it and very accepting and very inclusive and, I was no very hazing. grateful for that. No hazing or making your earn your stripes or anything or just nothing you can talk about um, on the podcast? You know, every, <laughs> yeah, I mean, not really. I think for the most part when they, you know, they were very respectful. But now as I've gotten to know people more, especially now that I'm working on another season with them, mm -hmm. um, there is a little bit more of that. <laughs> um, but no, initially they are incredibly polite. <laughs> That's very um, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. It could have gone the other way, but... <laughs> right. Well, it's in, in my industry, because I am actually an audio engineer, so a lot of, there is a lot of trial by fire, and, like, and you know, you have to earn your stripes everywhere you go, and it's... I was, I was wondering, and you know, then, different groups yeah. have their thing, you know? No, absolutely. And, and, I mean, there is some of that. I mean, I think that until I wrote my episode... I mean, I can't speak for everybody else, but I know for me how I felt. I felt like until I wrote that and people read it, um, even before the ep you know they saw the episode, that that was sort of my, you know, trial by fire. Mm. You know, just like okay, so do these people? You know, so they understand maybe why I got on right. <laughs> and I wasn't just there. <laughs> Helps you prove your metal <laughs> you know, a little for, bit. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, real quick, what what exactly does an executive uh, story supervisor do? 
I'm sorry, executive story executive editor. Story editor. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because even though we all have these titles, that you know, we actually all really do the same thing. Um, mm. That is more a product of how the TV business works okay. and how TV staffs work. Um, I think it is different on every show. There's certainly some shows, and it really, in the end of the day, depends on the showrunner. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the, you know, some shows, your title. You know, dep- your your job is different depending on what your title is. But mm-hmm. in this case, it's very democratic, and it doesn't matter if you're, you know, an executive producer like Tom Schnauz or, or Jenny, mm-hmm. um, or if you're a staff writer. You know, and and really, it's the only thing that it affects is your salary. Yeah, that's um, what I was going to say. It's, it, it's probably a pay grade thing yeah. or something. Yeah. It's just this ladder of, you know, it's this hierarchy that is really mostly about, um, yeah, about your your contract with, you know, with right. Sony and and that. It, it it in the in our room, it it doesn't mean anything really except for you are one of the writers in that writers' room, and you know, you pitch and you write and you go on set, and everybody does that. Nice. That's uh. So it's kind of like on your own to keep too many cooks out of the kitchen or something. Like you said, it's democratic. Like a lot of people have input in how scripts go and how the story progresses. Or does like someone come up with a rough draft? I don't know. Um, I don't want to get too well, detailed or ask I too mean, many questions, but I'm very yeah, curious about no, that. No, no. I mean, uh, I mean, basically, we all, the way it works is that everybody in the room pitches ideas. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, dep- obviously, depending on what we're what we're talking about. And then... Peter and and Vince are the ones who decide what ends up going into the show. Okay. So we, you know, they decide basically every show does this differently, but we have bulletin boards up in our writer's room and we use index cards Mm. and somebody writes, writes on those cards with Sharpies and we basically put them up on the bulletin board. You know, we have teaser act one, act two, act three, act four, and it all goes up on this board. Okay. And then whoever's writing that particular episode uses the, you know, what's on the cards and also what's in the notes that our writer's assistant Ariel takes. Hmm. Um, and we craft our outline from that. And then from that, from the outline, we write our script. Oh, wow. That's very. That's actually very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As long so as you're not throwing really, darts at the index cards, you know, randomly picking a plot or something. <laughs> yeah, the index cards are like you know, with everyone, it's it's we're very serious about this process mm-hmm. in terms of you know, it has to be just so. I mean, we have we you know, and there's some superstition involved too. Like we have we only use certain cards, and hmm. the sharpie has to have a lot of ink in it. And, hmm. You know, there's sort of this interesting ritual behind the whole thing, which I think really comes from just, I think it just, it, I, I think it comes from Vince, actually. Yeah, from, it's, I, I, I've been, I don't, I don't know if I, you know, it's a, a weird relation, but I was in a band and we had, like every every group that I get involved in, there's rituals. Like this, it's just a group thing, I guess. Exactly. You kind of make it your own group exactly. by having your little rituals. You make it your own, to, exactly. And, and, and I know that they work this way on Breaking Bad. So, Mm -hmm. you know, with this, with the new show, they, you know, Vince just, you know, wanted to keep going (laughs) with that, with that, you know, with that particular ritual. That is. And so here we are. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, Which will segue segue us into my last question. Speaking of rituals, we ask all of our guests this. What is your favorite frozen pizza? What is my favorite frozen pizza? Yes. Hmm. That's an interesting question. I would say that oh. all right i'm gonna say the ones that are made by california pizza kitchen okay i've never uh, had i've I never had one of those you never had those so you know there's that those restaurants um mm-hmm. it's a chain and they sell their pizzas in in grocery stores and the one that i really like is the barbecue chicken oh wow barbecue chicken california pizza kitchen frozen pizza yeah <laughs> It's very, very <laughs> No, that's all. Well, yeah, mine is uh, I'm tombstone sausage done. That's it. You know, pretty pretty standard. Yeah. But uh, the question throws yeah. some people off. It's pretty funny. 
<laughs> no, it is funny, and I'm glad actually I had an answer because I could have very easily been stuttering and had no answer for you. <laughs> some of the some of the actually it's some of the better call saw people had to like add ingredients to their frozen pizza, and I always took that as a sin. Like you don't add ingredients to a frozen pizza, dude. You know, just just throw it in the oven, and cook it. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, no. I mean, it's yeah. You, you you throw it in the oven and cook it. I mean, it's you know we. I have made my own pizza, but that's, that's different. <laughs> well, <laughs> Land Cherkis, thank you so much for joining us on It's All Good, Man. Uh, congratulations on all your success and becoming a member of a show that you're actually a fan of. It's a pretty incredible goal for anybody in their life. So kudos to that. And uh, thank you for spending thank time with us. Thank you so much. Our fans appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we can talk again, maybe with Brian next time. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And uh, I hope I hope people enjoy hearing what it's like to to work on Better Call Saul. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty nerdy. I think everybody will like it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Okay. You're you're very welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Ann. Okay, take care. It's all good, man. Hey, hey it's all good, man.